Like many nerds, I've always imagined what it would be like for Batman and Superman to fuse together into one super heroic, godlike being. But I didn't exactly imagine this. Yeah, I guess I can kind of throw this out there as one of my personal hot takes of 2024. If this is exactly the visual representation of what it would be like for Batman and Superman to fuse together into one being lifted from the comics, specifically from the World's Finest story arc, then frankly, I feel like they can kind of keep it because I personally don't know if I necessarily like this version of the suit. I don't know if there's like a Mark II, if there's a reincarnation, if there's a different portrayal, but in terms of the suit, I get it. They kind of picked and chose specific parts of the suit, predominantly the black from Batman with a little bit of the utility belt, as well as, of course, the very obvious cowl modeled after Batman himself, but then everything else is now retrofitted to fit the very colorful palette of Superman's attire as far as the red, the blue, the yellow, and then you have that symbol in the middle. Although, I will have to say that despite my personal feelings about the suit itself, it's that symbol that I actually do kind of resonate a little bit with. If I ever imagined for the Batman and Superman symbols to fuse together into one singular emblem, it would definitively be this one. I think it's maybe the color that kind of throws it off a little bit to kind of retain a little bit of the Superman red and yellow, but in terms of actually having the bat in the middle, then forming the S with its wings, I'm like, all right, that's actually a very fine touch. But in terms of the design of the suit, I'm just kind of like, ugh, brother, ugh. I just, I, I don't know. There's just something a little too garish. It kind of makes me feel like you just threw a coloring book to a kid and they just grabbed the box of crayons and then just started to go to town on a specific superhero that's templated to look like if it was Superman and Batman fused together. But then that kid just shows, oh, well, I'm going to do red for this, black for this, green for this. All those things aside, though, I am definitely self-aware that those are my personal feelings towards the suit and the actual design of the character itself. That's in no way, shape, or form a remark on the figure, which is replicated almost one-to-one -one from the way that it looks like in the comics here in DC Multiverse 7-inch fashion. And McFarlane didn't necessarily spare any expense because you can see right here that without any cape to kind of coming in the way, you can see that they kind of retooled pieces of the Superman as Batman figure. And I say that not just because of the actual sculpting of the limbs, the torso, and everything else kind of combined in here, but I think the dead giveaway would most definitely have to be a little bit of the ridging on the suit that you can find on top of the biceps, shoulders, and on the outside portion of the legs. You can see right there an awful lot of that like paneling, like very single file line paneling that you have happening vertically from top to bottom. And I distinctly remember the Superman as Batman figure, which in my opinion is actually one of the highlights from last year, one of the highlights releases, definitely having that specific characteristic embedded into its figure, into its costume. And you can see that they pretty much lifted that exact same buck, even down right to the cowl, since it's pretty much emulating that kind of feel of having the mouthless cowl and head sculpt. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this is definitely a very sensible decision on McFarlane's part to simply just take that head sculpt, kind of maybe smooth it out a little bit, and then coat it with the red plastic, which is funny because putting it in the red with the white eyes kind of makes it look a little red hoodish. So I guess that's another little connection, a little bit of background lore to the Batman part of this fusion being. Outside of that though, sculpted very nice, painted very nice, and most definitely I can say the same thing about the figure itself. Despite how I am feeling about the design choices of the costume, that stays within the comics. As a figure, I damn near kind of love this thing, actually. So yeah, take my sincerest apologies and somewhat baiting you guys into thinking that I'm really hating this figure because I really am not. I'm just really indifferent, downright disliking the design choices. But as far as the feel for the figure itself, as, as far as sculpting and quality of the plastic, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they utilized one of the best bucks to have been released last year, or I think it was maybe the year before that. It's kind of blending in a little bit together. But the Superman as Batman figure is actually one of my highlights of my collection so to see that that was exactly the buck for the most part that they utilize for this fusion is a very welcome choice because the quality of the limbs feel really good the sculpting of the musculature the chest area and even though like i said it just feels kind of piecemealed as far as where you get the blue versus the red on top of the shoulders here leading to a very strange looking symbol on the back which i 
understand it's supposed to kind of be a little bit different than the one on the front. So it's pretty much ideally the exact same thing, only this time it's got a black background instead of the yellow. But at least it's painted and stamped on there pretty, pretty nicely. And what really, like I said, hones it in is the sculpture behind the musculature, the Latimus Dorsey going into the very girthy thighs, and then just really utilizing the buck effectively to really deliver that you're getting two mighty DC Titans fused in there together is a welcome touch. And the belt itself, even though it doesn't necessarily connect here in the middle, I do like the additional touches of having it be this pouch-like brown to then resonate with that of the type of utility belt that Batman uses, but at least it's very well detailed as far as the little contraptions, the pouches, it almost even looked like a Wonder Woman lasso right here, but I'm guessing that's just a callback to Batman's grapple. The only area that even as a figure still looks just a touch ugly would have to be all these little indentations and accents of green to again harken back to the explanation as to why they came to be, which is the Green Lantern ring. Still though, I think it just stands out a little bit too much like an eyesore compared to all the other colors that just marry together a little better. The red, the blue, even a little bit of the yellow from the symbol just marries well with the black. So to have this green in there, again, it just kind of lends a little bit to that analogy that I was coming up with uh, as far as the kid with the crayons. It's like, well, I want some green in there. Just because you want it in there doesn't mean that it needs to be in there. And since this book is using the best parts about that Superman as Batman figure as far as the proportioning, the musculature, making sure that everything just works with each other, then of course the articulation is going to be no different. The articulation actually feels pretty good in hand to the point where every time I just kind of move this figure about and position it and put it in a variety of poses, it not only feels good in hand, but it, it feels like it never really limits itself. So the head is pretty natural as far as being able to turn all the way around and even being able to look up a decent amount. Not as good as I would have had it, but definitely be able to look down on the very inferior beings compared to this guy. So it's good, pretty good that they managed to hone in on that pose. But tilting side to side is also pretty decent. It's once we get to the arms, though, that the highlights truly come in, and I really respect it. Not only do you have the dumbbell joint in there that actually does a favorable job of being able to rotate the arm 360 all the way around vertically like that, as well as being able to not only extend towards the sides and a little upwards, but you can see in any kind of mobility, in any kind of motion, you see right there the butterfly joint, or not really the butterfly joint, but the butterfly motion happening in full uh, array right there so flexing forwards and backwards as well as being able to shrug and almost any kind of 360 movement and the washer moving in tandem to be able to flush and also cover up the dumbbell making sure that it doesn't look all that ugly so that's awesome biceps are definitely able to rotate 360 all the way around though i will nitpick just slightly to say that because of how i don't want to say loose but very very fluid that shoulder joint really is the biceps do kind of even though they're able to fully rotate and are very firm, but also very lo not loose, but just loose enough to be able to be fluid, it then causes the shoulder to just kind of move in conjunction with it. So you just kind of have to like force yourself to press the shoulder in to get the bicep to move in any, any kind of direction. So that could prove to be a slight little inconvenience for certain collectors. But as far as the elbows, they're pretty much straightforward. You can bend them both at the joints. So you're able to bend the arm or the lower arm almost all the way up. And then the wrist joints are of course able to allow the hand to fully rotate at the top of the joint, but then the hinge inside is able to fully bend inwards and upwards like so, or inwards and outwards, sorry. But you can see that it's that flush wrist joint that I really, really like. And a refreshing change of pace since I feel like most recent McFarlane's that I've been covering have been having some somewhat limited mid-torso joints. But because this is the Superman as Batman figure, one of my main highlights of that guy when it came to articulation was that the mid-torso was very fluid and very good feeling in hand if that even makes any kind of sense and I feel like they pretty much just took it copied and pasted here but can't complain about that because the mid torso is definitely able to allow the full top of the body here to rotate 360 degrees but then crunching and bending in any kind of direction whether it be front back or side to side on the obliques is very fluid and very nice in hand so that's pretty cool to see right there on the mid torso and then you can get a little bit more of extension towards the back but not as much as I would have liked to towards the front on the waist. Rotation is also technically 
can allow it. Actually, yeah, right about right there. 360 movement on the waist. But the reason for why it feels a little resistant there is due to the fact that the belt is just so garish here on the diaper piece. Which is definitely not the case with the original Superman as Batman. It was a little bit more minimalistic compared to what we got going on right here but technically the motion can still happen right there you just got to give it a little bit of an extra push but again you can extend towards the back very fluidly crunching towards the front is a little bit more limited but only because of all these extra pockets and things that are going on here with the utility utility belt like i said when it comes to the top leg joints however you can still kind of bend them forwards about that far again going back to what i was mentioning about the diaper piece it does look like it's limiting a little bit on the extra side due to how much more there's going on with these pockets specifically on the right due to the grapple rope that he's got going on right here because of this part extending the leg in any kind of direction on the right is going to be feeling a little limited it's still doing a pretty serviceable job as far as where you're going to be putting the leg for certain poses but if you wanted to go it a little further then Unfortunately, that's not going to happen too well as other figures, specifically the figure that it's lifting from. Same thing when it comes to extending towards the back right there. You can see that it kind of just stops right about right there as far as extension towards the back. But to the sides, it's pretty decent, all things considered, what I was just mentioning already about the pouches. But you can see that it's almost able to achieve the whole 180 degree angle right there. Knees are able to bend at both joints, though I do remember it being a little bit on the very rigid side they can still bend almost all the way up like so but similar to that superman as batman they're a little rigid so you gotta give them a little bit of an extra push right about there but of course just like that other figure you got that very flush boot designed to the ankle that is able to have the foot bend downwards and upwards like so very fluidly but also still ratcheted in place so it gets stuck there for very firm positioning as well as full rotation at the top of the joint horizontally and even a little bit of an inclination at the bottom of the joint for the foot itself and the toes can subsequently be able to bend almost all the way up as you see right about right there so i knew that articulation was not going to be any kind of problem or concern considering that one of the things that i really dug about that figure was going to be the articulation so they managed to ace that however it just makes me wish that they would have aced it with the accessories because on the side here he comes with three whole green batarangs again taking the very garish green paint applications that i don't necessarily like about the gauntlets here on the figure itself and painting them across the batarangs here, which are sculpted very nicely. And even though the paint feels pretty quality as far as having that, that textured feel to it, like, oh, it's very well done on there. It doesn't feel like it's going to chip anytime soon. Still, though, it's that a specific choice of green hue that uh, it just stands out a little bit too much to the point where if there was a single Batman that would take advantage of these Batarangs, it would most definitely be the infected Batman. The one from Earth-22. I might be getting my numbers there wrong, but the one that looks kind of Jokerized and sickly, and I think there's like a glow-in-the-dark variant that's out there. He would probably pair the best when it comes to these specific Batarangs. But at the bright side, they were considerate enough to give you three, which is probably the most amount of Batarangs I've ever seen on a figure at one time. Not just with this guy, but I think there was a couple of other Batmans where I think the maximum I've ever seen any Batman figure have Batarangs is three. So pretty cool that they reached the maximum there. However, they didn't reach the maximum when it came to hand accessories because on the side you only get one extended reaching out left open hand. Which I'm like, all right, cool. But you know what would have been nice? An open uh, extended right hand. Because now this means that I can only swap this for the semi-gripping left hand. But then the right one is stuck in this fist position. So no way to kind of change things about. And I feel like this is just, again, triggering a little bit of my OCD. Because if I had it my way, I would have liked to have had this pose or this gesture for a hand on the right. So that way I can kind of interswap. You know, if I want him to look like he's, you know, looking all godlike and have both of his hands kind of reaching out like this, like I am the one then I would like to have that gesture on both hands, not just on the left. The right is completely permanently stuck in the fist position, which I get it. That's kind of harkening back to Superman, etc. You know, the power and all that jazz. But this is still a figure at the end of the day. Would have liked that option. And on that note of wanting to pose him in a very godlike stance to have people kind of bow down to him, especially since there's a little bit of Superman in him. 
which I was kind of wondering to myself, like, oh, what kind of accessories would he include from the Superman part of his being? We got the Batarangs for Batman. What would Superman want? Well, Superman doesn't really come with any accessories, except one in particular that favors any kind of Superman figure out there, and that would be a flight stand, which this guy does not come with. He comes with a standard black base. And I'm sorry, but if there was a a figure to bring back the flight base for in this current set or wave of releases for the late latter half of 2024 it will most definitely be the being the figure that happens to have half of his whole entity be made up of superman especially since like i said i want to be able to pose him in that way to make him look like he's floating make him look like he's reaching out his hands like he's in a very like i said god messiah kind of look or to simply look like he's about to deliver a superman punch in the middle of the air and unfortunately, you can't really do that here should you not have a flight base at the ready. Now, fortunately, I do, of course, since I happen to have already collected my fair share of Superman DC Multiverse figures. But I still have to consider that as a slight little demerit on the figure for certain people that are probably just starting to collect this year. And they don't happen to have any bases on hand, flight bases specifically. So that combined with, again, a little bit lacking on the accessories and then... My own personal biases of the suit and how I don't necessarily like to look at it all that much. At least the bulk of the figure, the simplicity of making sure that what was not broken didn't get overly fixed. Which is one of the standout figures that was released in the past couple of years. Which is that Superman as Batman figure being able to retain the articulation, retain the quality of the joints, retain the quality and the sculpt of the body itself, making sure the proportions are nice. And overall, it just feels like a really good figure to pose and play around with. Then at least all of that is still able to carry this figure into the recommendation territory. Just know where you stand as far as this suit is concerned and whether or not it's even good enough to warrant to pick up that platinum, which in my opinion is probably one of the most superfluous platinums that McFarlane has released in recent memory. But at least for the core figure here, if you manage to either pick him up in store or if he comes bundled in with the other figures of the wave, the Adam West, the Dick Grayson as Batman as a bundle deal either through an online retailer or McFarlane toy store themselves, I would still say that this is a worthwhile addition to your collection and I would give it a 7 out of 10 as far as a very firm rating. Again, I still feel like something could have been done about the suit as far as at least maybe muting a little bit of the red to make it not look so ostentatious or muting a little bit of the green but objectively as far as the figure is concerned it's those accessories and the lack of flight base that keep it from really reaching brand new heights especially since there's a little bit of superman buried within him where do you guys stand as far as a batman superman fusion character do you like this idea do you think it's ridiculous do you think that maybe they should reverse it like they do on Dragon Ball Z where you have Go Gogeta versus Vegito? <laughs> one is done with the earrings, one is done with the fusion dance, and therefore you have your different designs. Do you think that they should have a Superman-Batman hybrid where they kind of invert the influences, invert the look, and maybe that would be a cool McFarlane figure to come up with and release? Hey, actually, now I got the... Got, kind of got the ideas rolling around in my head right now. However, if you guys have ideas, let them be known in the comment section below. And while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Thumbs down if you did not. A massive thank you to our executive producers at the level 2 tier, Tom Bowling. And as always, stay humble. I'll see you guys later.